Yes, it's controversial. Yes, you can call it glamping. And yes, it may not make sense to people like me, who've only just graduated from energy drinks to iced coffees. But the reality is a lot of people these days want a decent, fresh coffee while they're camping and full driving. And the good news is it's not that difficult. Now this video is gonna deal with two 40 volt coffee machines. And there are plenty of other options out there if you wanna make a coffee over the fire or on your gas stove, or if you just wanna eat instant coffee out of the can to prove how tough you are. But for a 240 volt coffee machine, there's only three main things to think about. Number one is how much power your coffee machine needs. Number two is how you're actually gonna supply that amount of power. And number three is how you're gonna supply that amount of power in the long term. So let's start with your coffee machine and sizing your whole system. If you already have a coffee machine, then you're gonna need an inverter or generator that suits. If you already have an inverter or generator, then you'll need a coffee machine that suits your setup. Now obviously here, we've got an Adventure Kings 1500 watt inverter and a 2 kVA generator. So in terms of power, we've got 1500 watts to play with. They're fairly common sizes for most setups. With our 1500 watt inverter, we need a coffee machine that uses less power than that. This pod machine here uses around 1455 watts, and this real coffee machine uses between 1350 and 1450. So we're off to a good start. Now a note on generators, you'll have to make sure you look at their rated continuous output. In this case, 2000 watts. So if you wanna run a coffee machine, it needs to be less than that. If you wanna use your inverter to make a coffee, you need to be aware that it's gonna draw a lot of power out of your battery. In fact, at full tilt, a 1500 watt inverter could draw as much as about 125 amps at 12 volt. Now the higher the current, the more voltage drop you're gonna get, and the more voltage drop means the current's gonna go up again. So you start to see the pattern. As the voltage drops, the current will go up, which means the voltage will drop, which means the current will go up. Eventually you'll get to around 10 and a half volts and the inverter will cut out to protect itself. So let's talk how to power your inverter with your batteries and keep that voltage up. If you're running a lithium battery, great, because they're able to put out a higher voltage for a longer period without dropping off too much. And if you have a generator, you may as well run your coffee machine off that because then you're not putting any load on your batteries. But if you do want to run your inverter off an AGM battery to power a coffee machine, there's a couple of things you'll need to do. Number one is to use nice thick wiring that's not going to have any voltage drop even at those high levels of current. Number two is to use big batteries that are capable of outputting a lot of power. And number three is to actually use multiple batteries so you're sharing the load across each battery. Now all three of those are gonna help your battery live a long and happy life. There's another no-brainer, and that is to run your vehicle while you're using your coffee machine. That way your alternator or DC-DC charger can actually keep your battery topped up to reduce that voltage drop Plus, as soon as you've finished using your coffee machine, it's charging your battery right back up, which is where it wants to be. And in the interest of looking after your batteries, here's a hot tip. AGM deep cycle batteries don't particularly like being discharged with a really high current output. I've done a whole other video on this, but the short story is, the higher the current draw from the battery, theoretically, the smaller the battery's capacity. So if you had a 100 amp hour battery, that's tested over 20 hours, which means it's capable of putting out five amps, constantly for 20 hours. If you start trying to pull 125 amps out of your battery, it's no longer a 100 amp hour battery. As an example, let's do some quick maths with a 1500 watt inverter at full tilt, making coffees with a single 100 amp hour battery. If each coffee takes two minutes and you make five coffees in the morning for you and all your mates, you're running the coffee machine for a total of 10 minutes. Let's just say it's drawing 125 amps. To figure out your amp hours, you're drawing 125 amps, but only for 10 minutes or one sixth of an hour. 125 times 10 divided by 60 is just over 20 amp hours. You've still got around 80% capacity, you think, so not too bad. Well, in the real world and a little thing called Pukert's law, you're actually around 60% capacity. Now the way that works is because you're drawing so much current out of your battery and your theoretical battery capacity is lower, you're not drawing from a 100 amp hour battery, you're drawing from around an 80 amp hour battery. So you've drawn 20 out, you're now down to 60 amp hours. So once your battery recovers at rest for a little while, it's now at 60 amp hours out of 100. So again, to keep your AGM batteries living a long and healthy life, there's a couple of things you can do. Definitely run your alternator to keep the voltage up 
and be charging your battery while you're making the coffee and in between making coffees, or use your generator so that it's just completely separate from your batteries and you're not wasting precious power. Now the other thing you can do is obviously add solar to your setup. If you have a big solar setup, it's gonna be pushing those volts up anyway, and as soon as you finish making coffees for the day, it's gonna recharge your battery, which is where your AGM battery wants to be. Now, if you wanna skip all the technical details, the super easy way to run a coffee machine at camp is obviously to use a generator. And there are a couple of benefits. Number one, it's not drawing any power from your batteries. Number two is if you're in a big group, you can use your generator for all sorts of things. So if you had a communal kitchen, it just means that everyone can use it in the middle of camp, not working out of the back of your car. Number three, your generator can obviously run a whole lot more than just a coffee machine. So you open up a whole new avenue of options that you can use at camp. And because modern generators like this are so lightweight and portable, plus they're fuel efficient and so quiet, you can basically run them at the end of an extension cord and you're not gonna even notice they're there. Overall, it's super easy to make a coffee at camp and it really depends how you wanna do it. So if you do wanna use your 12 volt system, it's just really important to keep it as charged up as possible. Now that might mean straight up using your generator when you can to make your coffees, or use your generator to charge your batteries up after you're done. Make sure you're running your alternator so that it's charging the batteries while you're making coffees. Use bigger batteries with thicker wires and add a big solar panel and you should be right. And I know this topic is gonna to stir up a bunch of people. So if you do have any suggestions or questions, make sure you throw them in the comments below. As always, check out the rest of the channel because I've done a bunch of 12 volt videos touching on the topics that I've talked about, as well as some more technical and in-depth ones as well. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss anything else we're putting out, and I'll catch you in the next one.